Chapter 5. Just giving an outline, kind of like I've done for other chapters for this chapter. The first thing we talked about with Chapter 5 is simulations. And remember, the idea of simulations is assigning digits to outcomes, be able to describe in detail, or pick out correct options if it's multiple choice. So what digits are representing which outcomes uh, and which uh, and what exactly are you looking for? What are you keeping track of in each of those? How do you know when to stop? What are you going to do about repeats? Are you going to skip them or are you going to include them? Things like that. Uh, so being able to give that kind of detailed outline and description are uh, important ideas. Then we talked about definition of probability uh, and some misconceptions surrounding the idea of probability um, and basic laws of probability. So that's things like uh, all the probabilities possible should add up to one. Uh, it's the ideas that uh, the complement, you should know that the complement is uh, it not happening. And so if you want to find the probability that something doesn't happen, it'll be the one minus probability that it does happen. Or if you want to find the probability something happens, you can do it by finding one minus probability that it doesn't. So those kinds of ideas. Then remember that in general, if you describe a probability as or, it's going to mean that you generally add probabilities. If you see and, you're going to generally multiply probabilities. That's the idea. Uh, if you can generally describe it as or, add, and multiply. Right? You should know, this is going into 5.2, you should know how to make uh, a Venn diagram and a two-way table. Or if you have one of those, then you should be able to describe it. Um, you should also know what a probability distribution is. Remember, that is our tables that we write out each outcome on the first row, and then in the second row, we write down the probability of each of those outcomes. And each of those probabilities should add up to one. So we had a, an example with AP scores. We had one, two, three, four, five, and then what was probability of a one? What's probability of a two, probability of three, probability of four, probability of a five? Then we have uh, conditional probabilities. Remember, that's probability of something given something else happens. Given goes on the bottom. Speaking of which, there are two formulas in your formula sheet that will involve, uh, one involves conditional probabilities and then one involves your uh, or probabilities. All right. Then, and I'm gonna go over this in quite a bit of detail here, you should know the definition, uh, the differences. Uh, actually, I'll talk about that last. Let me say tree diagrams. Tree diagrams aren't necessarily required to solve problems, but often a tree diagram can be useful. If you have probabilities within probabilities, then it can be useful to make a tree diagram, and then remember you multiply across the tree diagram. So that's the idea. I should get to that. And then we will go to uh, talking about, you need to know the difference between mutually exclusive versus independent. And I wanna talk about that in a little bit of detail, just so you have that outline. 
So starting with, uh, let's start with independent. Let's break down that definition the same way we broke it down when we first wrote it. Independent, if A and B are independent, what that means is that A does not affect B. That knowing A doesn't affect B. It means that, which means that knowing A has happened doesn't change the chance of B happening. Which notation wise is how we come up with the probability of B given A is the probability of B. In other words, B given A is the idea of knowing that A has happened. And then probability of B is, I don't know whether or not A or B has happened. And the idea is that these two should be the same. So that's the most common way to check for independence. You find those two probabilities, probability B given A and the probability of B, and if they come out to be the same thing, they're independent. That means that if I tell you A happens, it doesn't change your chance that you had before that B happens. So the other main statement that happens with independence is that uh, we take this general formula that we can always use for the probability of A and B and say, well, because the probability of B given A is the probability of B, we can take probability of B and plug it in right here, and then it's just probability of A times probability of B. So that's another way to test for independence, if the probability of A and B is the probability of A times probability of B. Now, independent is different from mutually exclusive in a very important way, which I'll talk about in just a minute. But let me outline this first and make sure we remember our notation. Remember that this is union. This is our or. Uh, so this would be the probability of A or B. On the right here is how I say it aloud. This is intersection and, so this would be the probability of A and B, and then this would be the probability of A given B. Yeah, so those are all symbols that you should know and you should understand how they work and how to write them down. So with that, let me talk through the difference between mutually exclusive uh, and independent. Let's talk about mutually exclusive and then we'll talk about them together. Probability of A or B is probability of A plus probability of B minus probability of A and B. That's in your formula sheet. That is the formula all the time with probability of A and B. But if they're mutually exclusive, then we don't have that subtraction and we can just add. That is because what mutually exclusive means is that they can't happen together. They can't happen at the same time. So that would mean the probability of A and B would be zero, because it's impossible for them to happen together. So that's why there's no minus probability of A and B, because then you would be subtracting zero. So let's walk through what that would tell me about mutually exclusive and independent and how they compare. So I'm gonna walk through this line of reasoning. Again, you don't have to write this down, but follow this line of reasoning here, because we're gonna make an important statement at the end of it. A and B are mutually exclusive. What B mutually exclusive means is that they can't happen at the same time, which means that the probability of A and B is zero. So that means that if I know that A happens, what does that tell me about B? If A happened, can B happen? No. So that means I know that if A happened, B didn't happen. So what I have just said is that knowing that A happens has changed the chance of B happening. It has changed it to zero. So when things are mutually exclusive, here's a Venn diagram of mutually exclusive, they're not happening together. So if I know something is in A, I know it's not in B. It has changed the chance of B happening. And so when we jump over to independent, remember, uh, and then probably A or B is probably A plus probably B. If we jump over to independent, A and B are independent would mean that A does not affect B. It means knowing A happens doesn't change the chance of B happening, 
And so that's how we get this definition. So we are going to write that we are going to write a specific statement here that we have just outlined. Independent means if I know that A happens, it doesn't affect the chance of B happening. When I talked about mutually exclusive, what I just said was that if I know that A happened, it changed the chance that B happened. And in fact, change that chance to zero. So because of that, I'm going to make the statement that if two events are mutually exclusive, they cannot, cannot be independent. those definitions are in conflict. If I say they're mutually exclusive, I just said that if I know that A happens, it makes B impossible to happen. It means that I know that A happens, it changed your chance of B happening. That goes against the definition of independent. So hopefully that highlights and outlines some of those differences between mutually exclusive and independent. Mutually exclusive means they cannot happen together. So probably if A and B should be zero. And independent means if I know that A happens, it doesn't change my chance that B happens. So those are my two definitions.